an aesthetically pleasing physique is something that even since ancient times people have been trying to obtain and why wouldn't they? It gives you confidence, respect from other males, self-satisfaction and even it can even help you get better grades in school and yes, you guessed it, it does help you with women. A nice physique not only signals discipline, dedication and hard work, all of uh, traits that uh, people uh, find very admirable and uh, women find highly attractive but it also shows that you're healthy and physically fit as someone who has been kind of skinny before not really so strong i have uh, gone through a process that you're hopefully gonna go through i wish to help you out with this video and give you the tools so that you can build an aesthetic body yourself as i mentioned before i used to be kind of a scrawny kid didn't really have uh, so much confidence I struggled to talk with women. I kind of, I didn't know that a man should supposed to be like strong and look strong as well. There's a very good reason for that. If you look strong and feel strong, you, you get more confident, right? And so everybody kind of told me yeah, it's okay to be weak, blah, 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 in school and stuff like that. But then I kind of remember like all my favorite superheroes as a, as a little kid, you know, when you probably used to also watch shows like that, you know, like strong looking, very muscular, very confident men and I was like hell this is like this is how I want to be I want to be like them and so I started going to the gym you know little by little I started seeing adding more muscles and like that really gave me a lot of joy and confidence not only because yeah my physique started to look great but also because I saw like what I can do with my hard work I saw that if I actually put in hard work I saw it with my own eyes you know it's not the same thing as some other thing like sports or something because you don't really see the effects it has but when you start building your own physique you can clearly see the effect it has it, that your hard work has on you and gave me confidence in all other aspects of life as well now this video i'm going to give you all the knowledge that you need to know to get started on your journey you're getting like good biceps there is a reason that you're probably not so confident good looking you know muscular and i genuinely believe that 99 percent of all young males problems stem from this one reason and that is a lack of a good father figure or a father figure at all. Me personally, I didn't have a father figure growing up and so I kind of had to solve it in a roundabout way and that was by getting another role model instead. What I mean by that? But just someone that you look up to. Now, why is that a bad problem? Well, because a father's role is really like to push you in a good way so that you become the best version of yourself. Now think about it, if you would have had a good like father figure, he would never allow you to be unconfident, unfit, bad talking with women and all those kind of stuff and so that's why I genuinely believe that 99% of male's problems come from not having a good father figure, a masculine father but you shouldn't really blame your father because his proper father probably did the same thing to him so he doesn't know any better instead you gotta understand that you're an unlucky bastard take responsibility in your own hands go find someone that could be a good role model for you it can be someone in your close family, it can be someone on YouTube, it can even be a fictional character, just someone that you can like look up to, follow in their past because that's, if they're muscular, you're automatically then going to want to be muscular and look like them. So that's just a great way to drive your motivation for getting attaining a good physique. And the second one is be around people who train. It's the same thing. You you want to get jacked, be around fuck for jacked people. People who on the fifth. I cannot uh, explain to you in words how much that helps. You can you know, go upgrade your social skills and then go to the gym, befriend the people there, and start hanging out with them. In no time, you'll be the most jacked person ever, trust me. Okay, now we have actually come to the part on how to build an aesthetic physique. So, what does aesthetic physique even mean? In my interpretation, it's a body that's pleasing to the eye. So, usually that means a lower body fat percentage and proportional amount of muscle doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be really big, just proportionate. Now, how do you build that muscle? Well, you build it through resistance training. There are two ways you can do that. The first one I'm going to mention is my preferred one for building and attaining muscle because it's easier to target specific muscle groups that way. And that is lifting weights. You don't have to lift heavy. You can if you want to, just you have to challenge yourself. And the other one is body weight training. Body weight training, there are for sure a lot of people I build a good physique using that method. In my experience, it's a little bit harder to build like uh, very much muscle big just because the like the way you progress is a little bit more complex than in bodybuilding, but yeah, or in weight training, it's just simply putting on more weight. 
but as an extra can work, I would say it's a little bit less beginner friendly. Simply resistance training isn't enough, you have to do a few things. One of them is called progressive overload and this is uh, one of the most important things for building muscle. Progressive overload is simply that you make your training more strenuous so you make it harder for each time you go and train because how it works is when you train you put stress on the muscles and so when you go to sleep your muscle kind of builds up and they get stronger and so now because they are stronger you're gonna have to train a little bit harder in order to put on like the same stress that will make the muscles grow well if you are weight training you can simply do that by adding more weights or doing a few more repetitions if you're training calisthenia you could put on like a weighted rest or something like that definitely but usually progression there is made either by one doing more repetitions or two making the exercise harder by for example doing different variations of that exercise in this video i'm not going to go over exercises that you should do and stuff like that because you can easily find that somewhere else if you want me to do a video about like the best exercises that like, in my opinion the ones i use myself well, you could uh, type it in the comments. I will check it out if you're interested. I will for sure do it. You have to incorporate one more important thing with progressive overload. So in order to actually get stronger, you have to train pretty hard. I mean, you have to train till failure. So till failure simply means till the point that you cannot do one more repetition. You can also train one to two from failure. So one to two repetitions from failure. I would recommend to failure. There are some occasions that I wouldn't do that but for the most part I train to failure and you should absolutely do that too because that will put the most amount of stress on your muscles and that will indicate to the body that it definitely has to get stronger and so if you don't put sufficient amount of muscles on uh, stress on your muscles sorry you will not get bigger okay there are a simple way to do it one is just to push until you cannot do more that is great uh, on uh, like when I do isolation work so when I target a specific muscle I love to do drop sets because it's so easy to just drop the weight drop set is simply for example you're doing one weight and you do it till you cannot do one more then you drop the weight and you keep on doing it. that will ensure that you will get as much stress as possible on your muscle and will be like the most efficient way to grow them I especially recommend that when you're doing arm work and shoulder work and any kind, any, and really any kind of muscle work. Now, what uh, what muscles should you put emphasis on to get an aesthetically pleasing body? Well, I wouldn't really. I would say you have to train other muscle groups because then you're gonna look uh, unproportional, and that trust me, that's the least thing you want. For example, your legs. Yeah, even though your legs are definitely not the most aesthetically pleasing to look at, right? It just looks terrific. It looks so weird when you have like a really jacked upper body and then really big legs to ensure that that does not happen I would recommend train all your body parts two times a week you can do that easily by having a push-pull leg split or some kind of other split it's the same thing as exercise you can look it up just to give you my preference I, I like to do a push-pull leg and that's simply when you hit a push you hit chest and triceps the push muscles on pull you hit back and biceps the full muscles and on legs you hit legs and of course you can add a little bit more like i do uh, abdominal work on leg day because we're talking proportions you shouldn't probably be training all of the even though you're hitting all the muscle groups two times a week you probably shouldn't be hitting them like all of them as hard first of all you gotta see like if you're a newbie this shouldn't really be a problem because you're kind of going to grow everything fast but you can kind of look at, okay, so, okay, how big are my arms compared to my chest? For example, me, especially like when I get a pump, I have like terrifically big arms, especially compared to my chest. So, you know, I look kind of like a gorilla and it, it looks very, my chest is not bad, but it's it, it kind of lacking compared to my arms. And arms are one of those things that can grow very easily in like, in my experience and many others. But chest, for example, is a little bit harder to grow. You actually have to put in a lot of effort in it. And so... For example, when you're hitting your chest, you're hitting your triceps as well. Like that comes almost automatically. And so you don't really have to, if you're doing a lot, enough compound movements, when you're doing your arms, you don't have to really go that, do that many exercises for your arms because you have kind of already hit them when you've done bicep, when you're done chest, sorry. 
And so what will happen if you if you do too much arm work, your arms <laughs> will become like me. Two big arms, no, not really that bad, but, but you get what I mean. Chest and back are big muscles, so they're gonna need a little bit more work than your arms and uh, yeah, arms for example. Shoulders also very important if you want to get have like a nice V taper look. I would definitely recommend put big emphasis on your shoulders because people who have big arms but small shoulders, it, trust me, it looks terrific. Yeah, for that V taper look, it, the shoulders can get the upper part here and your legs even that will make you that will make it look like you have a good V taper. Even your of course your lats also everything like that will make you look look smaller. Right. One thing that a lot of people forget to do is uh, abdominal work, like for the abs and uh, also the neck. Okay, so train your whole stomach, all of the parts, and your neck as well, because the same thing with legs, even though the neck isn't really that, like, in my opinion, like, an attractive nut muscle. Like, if you ask someone what's the most attractive muscle, they're not gonna say neck or legs. But it's one of those things that if your neck is small and you're huge, it, <laughs> man, it's gonna look like you train one single day in your life, especially if you have hoodie or something on. It's gonna look very, very bad. The same thing with your neck, you can hit it, like, two times a week or something like that. Forearms as well, remember, you don't want tiny forearms. Usually, you don't really have to train them that much because like, if you're pushing yourself hard enough doing pull-ups and stuff like that, trust me, you will grow you will grow your forearms like hell, but you can kind of decide that for yourself if you need bigger forearms or not. But uh, I would definitely recommend putting in some work to get optimal forearms. Now we are coming to the kind of mundane part that uh, nobody likes to talk about really, and it's diet. So diet is about what you eat, it can even be about when you eat, and you say that that's almost as important. If you want to have an okay physique, really what you eat it does not matter. You can still build a pretty okay physique eating shit food, as long as uh, your calorie intake is not yeah, that above your daily calorie waste, like how much calories you burn a day. But if you want to build a great physique, if you want to have like an awesome physique, trust me, you better pay attention to what you eat. Let me tell you the it doesn't really make sense to eat shit food because if you eat shit food because of the like insulin and stuff like that I, I don't really know the real science behind it but when you eat shit food your testosterone drops when your testosterone drops you will not be able to put on as much muscle that's vital the only reason these bodybuilders can eat shit food and still be jacked as hell is because they take TRT right they inject themselves with all sorts of stuff that skyrockets their testosterone and the food, the bad food doesn't really have any effect on them. Also, you will be very fatigued. You are what you eat, you know, that, that's how the saying goes and that's absolutely true. If you eat shit food, you will feel like shit, you won't even want to go to the gym. It will affect your sleep and uh, that will ultimately affect your gains. Now, as I said before, if you want to have the best physique, uh, also physique, you gotta eat food. And uh, let me tell you, eating good, I don't mean you gotta eat chicken, rice and broccoli. That, that's uh, not a good diet. What I recommend, and this is what I do as well, Eliminate all processed food, and trust me, that's it's not as hard as it sounds. Maybe you're like, oh, I gotta give up, don't want to give up all that. And yeah, it can be hard because almost everything is processed nowadays. But that's really the thing that's making people fat. It's processed foods. If you eliminate processed foods, sugar, that's all you need. I would actually recommend if you do that thing and only eat like one ingredient food. So basically food that only have one ingredient you I would say go ahead and eat as much you want. I do that personally and uh, I am the best shape I have ever been in. I'm probably around 12% body fat all the time. And hey, I haven't had a problem, a problem with it ever. So if you're in your teens, for example, you're gonna have a little bit higher meta metabolism and you're because you're going to grow. And so if you're growing, you're gonna get taller, but you want to put that on muscle at the same time, then of course you're going to be burning a lot more calories. So that means that, and you don't wanna be putting in shit food, especially then, because that, that, that can even make you like not grow as tall. But because you're growing and you want to put on muscle, you have to eat as much as possible. Like you gotta, how much you're eating, just eat like extra until you're full. You, you, you don't have to worry about getting fat because if you're sticking to the thing I told you, non-processed foods, you can basically eat how much you want and like it tastes good. You know, the only reason you think healthy food tastes bad is because they remove the fat and no shit, it, it tastes and replace, replace it with some other shit. No, if you eat like healthy fats, you know, fats on the meat. Like stuff like that, it tastes amazing. And also, if you have a good diet, you will perform better in the gym, you will recover better, you will feel better, you will be more productive, and all of that will make you gain more muscle. Basically, you will have a better physique. And also, what's the point to have a good physique if you eat like shit and feel like shit? There's no point in it. Also, your the muscle-like quality, for example, 
when you buy meat from the store, if the cow has been fed shit food, the meat will be shit. That's, that's just how it goes. So for me, it's kind of like a no brainer to think that, okay, if I eat like shit, then the muscles I gain from that shit food will also be shit. And that's, that's how it works. Being on diet is absolutely no alcohol. Bro. Like your alcohol, the alcohol, if you drink it, it makes your testosterone go from here to Bro, that's, that's absolutely what it does. It fucks up your sleep, it fucks up your testosterone. If you want to have an aesthetically pleasing physique, no alcohol and that's it. Sleep and recovery. This is, I would say, like for life, like health in general, diet is the most important thing. Second thing would be sleep, because I do believe that like the diet does affect your sleep. So if you don't have a good diet, you won't have good sleep either. But sleep is equally as important. You build your muscle not when you train, but when you sleep. I would recommend getting eight hours. If you're younger, you should be absolutely getting more. Eight to 10 hours, especially if you're training. If you're in your teens, teenage years and still growing, I would try to offer 10 hours at least. It's not the end of the world if you, if you can't get that much, but try to get in that much sleep. If you have to go to sleep earlier, do that. It will definitely benefit you. Also, if you get bad sleep, guarantee you won't like be able to train as efficiently the next day. And that will also impact your fame gains and gains. Now, in order to stay consist consistent, you actually have to have a good schedule of sorts. What I mean by that is get a schedule that fits you. Like what, what days are you going to train? You have to figure all of that out before. When you start, like when you want to go to the gym for the first time and you're having like a little bit of, uh, I, I don't really know if I should go, some doubts, I would definitely recommend just go to the gym and uh, don't think about it, right? So don't think about what you're going to do, just get there. You can ask people, just see what other people are doing do the exercises if you're not and you know okay, i'm definitely going to go definitely prepare what days you're going to do at the gym if you want to train six days a week five days a week four days a week some people recommend that when you're a beginner you should try full body workout three days a week for me personally when i started training uh, i started training six days a week or, or even seven i don't remember seven is probably a little bit too much six five days a week you can definitely handle as long as the, the vo volume is not too high for you so Try to see for yourself how much you can train. And also you should figure out how long you should train, when you should train and how you should train. Because it's gonna be a lot easier to stay consistent if you know these things. So for how long, for example, I recommend no more than one hour, one hour and a half. But that also depends like for like a beginner, you can definitely stay in the gym for like 30 minutes. That's enough, 45 minutes. Although at the, I would say peak of my like, strength and physique and stuff like that, I used to like literally be in the gym for like three hours straight. And, that's probably way too much, but that's what I did. It uh, worked for me. Could I have uh, gotten the same results with less time in the gym probably, but that's what I did. So I had to figure that out. When, what time? Because if you just go like at random times, it will be hard to think because it will be, ah, and I'm gonna have to go. But for example, six o'clock, you're gonna go to the gym every single day. That's it. So then it will, it will be easier to stay, to, to stay consistent. Where do you want to train? Like what gym do you want to go to? Do you want to go to that gym over there? Or do you want to get to that gym that's a little bit longer away, but maybe it's better? You don't go, get confused and waste your brain power when you're about to train. Also, prepare exercise. This is like really important to prepare the exercise you're going to do in advance and uh, how you're going to do that. Because trust me, the last thing you want is to be on your phone in the gym and looking, oh, how should I do this exercise? Thinking, hmm, what exercise should I do? and stuff like that. It just will make your whole, whole <laughs> uh, will just make your whole uh, experience in the gym way worse and it will be way harder to train. And did I mention that uh, consistency is also one of the most important things because if you're not consistent, it doesn't matter if you have trained super hard for one week and then you take one week off, you're not gonna get any gains. Better to train moderately, moderately if you can train really hard, but like for a whole year, right? Of course, you're gonna have rests like every single week, you're gonna have one, two rest days. And that, that's when you're going to see the best results, right? When you stay consistent. And that's like with everything in life because you're just gonna get the wheel spinning and it's gonna go start spinning faster and faster and faster until it's gonna be hard to catch up, man. Like you're gonna think, oh, how did, how did it happen so fast? You're already gonna be like Arnold Schwarzenegger number two. Now for the last, I'm gonna give you like some tips. My first tip is don't be on your phone. Like this is the most annoying thing I see people do. It's like when they're training and they're like on their phone and then they ask, uh, oh, why, why can't I get big? You're like, blah, blah, blah. Well, no well, shit, you're on your phone playing PUBG. And I'm not even kidding. I saw like, okay, they, I won't even call them kids because they're like the same age as me, maybe a little bit older. 
Uh, they, they went to the gym and bro, they pull up their phones and they start playing fucking PUBG in the middle of the gym. Bro. It, it's like they don't even train, they go to the gym to play PUBG. And of course, they're all like, okay, they're a little bit new to the gym and stuff like that. But still, it's like, what the fuck? It's like, bro, you can't be doing that. I, I don't train with my phone and when I've started doing that, that's when I've seen like the most results ever. It was like I got like the newbie kings all over again. It's just gonna like drop your concentration and you're probably not gonna have any will to train anymore. So just do the hard work for that like one one hour, one hour and a half, and then you can be on your phone as much as you want. And uh, tip number two, it kind of sounds obvious, but like a lot of people don't actually do that or they think that they're doing it, but they really are not. Train hard, right? You got to really like if you're especially if you're struggling to build muscle, like. If you're a pretty skinny guy, bro, you have to eat like a horse and train as much as possible. Trust me. If you're thinking you're training hard, yeah, you're, you're probably not. If you're not seeing any gains, you're probably not eating or training hard enough. There's like really nothing else. It's not that you're doing exercise wrong or something like that. Some words I want to tell you before I end this video is be patient. If you're getting the things I mentioned here right, there's no way that you will not see gains. They will come to you. You will be rewarded for your hard work. Trust me. And so bro, I wish you the best of luck on your journey to getting jacked, man. And uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit uh, that like button or subscribe.